So you have a documentary on the making of the thong song. Now, yeah. at the time that that song was recorded, nobody uh -huh. realized how- Are we starting that interview, Cynthia? Let me get off if we're starting the interview. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me- <laughs> All right, let's take two. Okay. All right. Okay, Cisco, when we first started writing about Drew Hill and you in Write On Magazine, um, did you ever expect that the thong song was going to get as big as it actually did? Because I remember the controversy about the song, but I don't <laughs> know if you remember the controversy about the song. I, I remember it was a it was a lot it was a, it was a lot of controversy about that song. Um, things are a lot looser, um, pardon the pun, um, <laughs> today as it relates to uh, you know what you can say and do um, in the mainstream um, media. Uh, but yeah, back then it was pretty wild, and yeah, I thought the song would be would be big. Um, I'm just um, I'm just glad that 20 years later people still can appreciate it. Um, so that so to to answer your question, I, I think in that moment I thought the song would be big, but I wasn't sure that 20 years later it still would be you know around and kicking and being sampled and you know all of that. Yeah. Now, what one thing I remember about the song is. Um, because Drew Hill was supposed to be kind of like a teen group, um, the song was considered somewhat risque because of the fact that we're talking about thongs, which is a very abbreviated piece of underwear or yeah. bathing suit. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you were being pretty daring and people weren't sure what was going to happen. But the next thing we knew, I think partially because of MTV, the song just really took on a life of its own. Yes, and, yes. I, and, I think it, I think it went past the song. I think I think because, like I said, because all, uh, all of the censor censorship and how the reins were pretty tight, and you know, you just had young kids wanting to express themselves, and you know. Um, you know, it was just a lot of movements going on with just young people and different races and women, um, you know, gaining uh, more independence and more power. I mean, Thong Song is pretty much the the birth, um, the birthplace of songs like, you know, Megan Thee Stallion's WAP. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, right in, it's in that same, you know, just kind of empowerment movement. Um, the best thing about, I, I think, uh, Thong Song, though, is that everybody involved wins. <laughs> and um, the thing about it is, the song actually kind of made your career to a certain degree, because after that, it was all about Cisco. So how did that make you feel? Um, man, it was, you, you know, I, I was in, I was kind of in an echo chamber, if you will, because, um, because when, when, when I had worked with my group, we had came directly out of high school into the music industry. And um, I was uh, fortunate enough to have uh, two multi-platinum albums before I even did the solo thing. So um, to, to, to be honest, it was like, it was almost like just having, just getting maybe a slightly bigger room than than you used to have. But I had we had I had already gotten past the initial shock of of of, of experiencing success. Um, but to but to be honest, the scale that I had received success um, as a solo artist was. Um, De definitely opened my eyes to things I didn't see as a platinum artist, multi-platinum artist with Drew Hill. Mm -hmm. So, um, so once again, to answer your question, yeah, it was, it it was a shock. It it, it was because uh, I thought I saw it all. You know, a as a young inner city kid from Baltimore, um, 
once you become multi-platinum, that's more than anybody expects, you know, when, when you're coming from Baltimore and the only no notable artists that had come from there at the time were, were um, artists that were um, out before we were born, like Billie Holiday and Cab Calloway. Mm -hmm. Well, this is so amazing. You must have been so excited when you found out that Vice Media wanted to do a documentary based around um, that particular song, weren't you? Um, it was, we, we had just did another, it was just like another interview for me um, during that day, but I am um, ecstatic that so many people um, have, has shown interest. The last time I looked, it was like a half a million people that checked it out. It's only been out for like three days. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but not, we, we have kind of moved away from the mainstream media, but um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, still been able uh, to work um, even through the pandemic. Um, ironically with Thong Song, I was asked uh, by, by uh, Daddy Yankee um, they wanted to use uh, my song. And um, fortunately for me, I own the masters. So they came to me and asked if they could remix my song. And then I performed on the um, Latin musical, I mean, Latin Billboard Awards uh, for the first uh, time um, back, uh, back in the summer, I believe. Oh, okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of your other um, musical endeavors at the moment? Because obviously uh, the, the pandemic hasn't kept you down for long. No, uh, no, thank, thank God. Um, we've, uh, I, I actually um, just did a collaboration with um, Omar Wilson, uh, Sean Stockman, um, and Raheem Devon for a remake of uh, Quincy Jones' Secret Garden. Oh my gosh, my favorite. Really? We got a oh, video. Yes. Check it out. <laughs> that, was, that was a classic, but I, I've got yeah. to hear your version. Yes, yes. We shot a video and everything. Um, and, and that was that was a fantastic um endeavor. Hopefully we get to perform it live soon. Um I've been uh, also fortunate enough to uh continue performing um with Drew Hill as well as the live performance that we had on the Latin Billboard Awards. Um, and having opportunities to do, you know, these interviews with you. That's why we got the setup because, um, man, through the pandemic, it's like, I guess people have been home. And so they've kind of been able to kind of delve into the music, I guess, that moved them over the years. And I guess we've been a part of, um, a part of that movie. Right. And so here we are. <laughs> I think that's great. And you still look fantastic. Thank you. you, you too. Any, oh, thank you. <laughs> any, any tips you want to give us any workout tips or workout anything? tips? Um, you gotta, man, you gotta push through and, and do your best. To, um, don't lie to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are funny. And um, also, what uh, do you have any um, advice for some of the new artists that are coming along? Because sometimes they try to act like R&B is dead. And oh. R&B is not dead. I mean, I know so many people that have um, collaborated or they, they um, use samples or yeah. done whatever. And yeah, they sampling my music. So. Right, right. So what do you what do you have to say to some of the younger generation? Uh, to some of the younger kids, keep yeah, going, keep going understand. and keep saying that R&B's dead and keep sampling my music. Thank you. <laughs> no, <I'm trying. laughs> no, um, no, what I, what I would say is, uh, hey, you know, uh, to, the, to the younger artists out there, man, you know, you notice everybody's dyeing their hair different colors now. Um, so I, I appreciate the, uh, that I was able to influence you guys, even if you didn't know that I was influencing you guys. Um, but, uh, the key to success and longevity is just, um, to just do your best to respect, um, the ones that, that came 
before you. I do my best to do that. Um, you know, when, when people say that Drew Hill sounds like Jodeci, I don't deny it. I say, thank you. We were doing our best Jodeci impression. We were doing our best Boys the Men impression. Um, every uh, R&B artist is either doing their best Michael Jackson or Prince impression, male R&B artists, even some female artists. And, and, you know, we're doing our best to do our best Janet and Madonna impression, at, at least me, because those were the influences that I had. I'm gonna do the best that I can to just, you know, every chance I get, you know, keep lifting up those influences that I, that I had so that, you know, those um, artists can know, you know, how they inspire me. And hopefully that will inspire the next generation and they'll go back and listen to my inspiration and that will keep music alive. Well, that's a wonderful answer. Now, when Drew Hill first got started, we didn't have social media back then. Tell me, what is your favorite? It was just starting. It was just starting, actually. Yeah. What is your very favorite um, social media platform to use at this point? What oh, man. Uh, they, they, didn't pay me, they didn't pay me for that endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I'm going to go get with Master P. Cause he live here now. I, I, I'm in Minnesota. He live here now. I gotta get with him because he said we need to get our own, our own um, social media platform. I'm like, yeah. I'm with you, brother. Let's go. He did say that. So right? you're in Minnesota, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. Do not be a stranger. Always. It's um, always, a, it's always been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much. Right on is now right on digital.com, and we have a lot of exciting things coming up.